Okay, hello, hello guys. I'm gonna give you a minute to hop on over and join the, the video here. Hope you're doing good. So today's Bead Table Wednesday and I have a fun little bracelet project that we're going to do. And it's one of those that whip up in a few minutes so I think you'll really enjoy this. All right, let's get started. I'm sure you guys will be moseying on over in just a second. Hello, hello, I'm Heather Powers from Humble Beads, and I'm a bead maker, jewelry designer, author, illustrator, and your all-around creative muse. So I hope you guys join me every week and get inspired to make jewelry and, and have fun here with me. So hello, Rosalinda. You guys say hello if you're here. I'd love to hear from you guys. I love chatting with you. In fact, I miss when I don't get to chat with you. So I'm really glad when you guys leave comments. Hello, Susan from New York. Yay. And greetings from Julian, California. Hello, hello, guys. So it's like mid-October already. Wow. <laughs> How does this happen? Oh, well, thank you, Rosalinda. Um, I'm liking this color. It's a really popular, trendy color for fall. Who knew? <laughs> <laughs> Hi Joan, Marlene, nice to have you guys here, and um, Pammy J, Pajin, not sure how you say your name, but hello, 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 nice to have you here, and Bonnie. Hi guys, welcome, welcome. So if you didn't get a chance here's to see the bracelet, here's the bracelet that we're going to make, and it's going to be a simple knotting project, like the most basic elementary knotting project we can do and then I'm going to make the little clasp out of leather something fun and different and we'll put it all together it's going to be a super easy fun one. Oh, hi Bonnie and Julie and Susan and Candy oh thank you Bonnie I'm glad you enjoy the videos so uh, before we get started I do have these in three colorways so I have the dark navy blue color and then I have this teal green color I have a purple and then I have that sage green color so those are the four color options that I have for us <laughs> show your earrings <laughs> Lynn they're um they're the ones that I did on a bead table Wednesday quite a while ago with the little um fringe with four millimeter beads on the bottom and did some nodding. Fun and easy. Hi everyone. Always glad to hear from my friend Lynn. So since my shirt has some purple in it, I'm going to actually do the purple one so that I can wear it for the rest of the day. <laughs> and I'm going to talk about what's in each of these kits in just a second. Let me get these off to the side so they're out of my way. So we're going to be using 1.5 millimeter leather. And then I have a Humble Beads disc bead, seven of the spindle beads that you can find on my website, and of course those are check glass. Then we have a five by seven millimeter rondelle, a little faceted rondelle. And then I have three check flowers that match my little color combination here. I have 18 gauge wire, and this is copper wire that's been antiqued. I have a yard of two ply wax linen, three head pins, a branch toggle bar, a little oak leaf charm, eight jump rings, rope jump rings, these are six millimeter, a little six millimeter bead cap, and one um, O bead, and a partridge in a pear tree. <laughs> I will have on my blog today, I'll put up the supply list so you guys can see everything that's on there along with the um, replay of the video and the image of the finished project. So to get started, I'm actually going to make the little dangle part first. And I'm gonna start by taking three of the jump rings and you need two pairs of flat pliers chain nose pliers and I'm gonna make a little rosette with the jump rings here so to do that I'm going to open one jump ring 
slip the second one on. Oh, gotta open it just a little bit more. These are actually really thick 18 gauge wire jump rings, so, oops. Okay, and now I'm going to close this up. Nice and tight. And then I'm going to take the third jump ring and open it up. Hi, Debbie. Christmas on my mind a little. Well, not really, but it's there. <laughs> and my hand is the same, but it'll heal eventually. It's a sprain, so they take a while. Okay, now I am taking my two little jump rings that I put together so you guys can see this nice and clearly and I'm taking the third jump ring and I'm sticking it through the center of the first two and I'm going to close this up and this is called a little rosette that we're making and get that closed nice and tight okay and I'm going to take my wire and you only need about three inches of this wire. You just need a tiny little bit. I'm gonna make a simple loop. Just like that. You're gonna stick on your rondelle, your bead cap, and the branch bead. Slide that down. And now I'm going to take my little rosette and I'm going to stick it through the center on the jump ring. So you can see I've gone through all three of them. And then I'm going to end with a little O bead to hold that all in. Okay, and you see how that's going to look? So it's a really fun way to add a little bit of texture to your design. And now I'm going to cut this and make a simple loop on the other side. And I may need to trim that a little bit more. We'll see. And you want to make sure that these are really tight. You don't want your little beads flopping around anywhere. So I'm just going on this side and tightening it up just a little bit. So that's what we have for our little bead link. That's what we're going to call it. <laughs> and now we're going to do the wrap. Oh, I guess I'll get these little guys ready too. So I like to work assembly line fashion. So if I'm going to do something on head pins, I do them all at once. And I'm actually going to use my little Vintage um, looper because this is a little easier on my hands today. So this is a one-step looper, so you just stick your head pin in there and close it <laughs> and it gives you a nice little loops if you don't have this tool you can just make a simple loop with your round nose head i mean chain nose pliers round nose pliers oh my god <laughs> <laughs> and you want to make sure those are all closed up nice and tight and they are great little loops i love that little looper it makes things go by so fast okay I have my one yard of two ply wax linen and we're using two ply wax linen because the holes on the spindles are on the smaller side so it'll just and we're going to have both strands going through the beads so I'm gonna <laughs> unwind this and I'm gonna fold this over 
make sure you don't get any little knots. So I'm going to fold the one yard in half and I'm going to string on the branch toggle. Oh, nope, not string on. Sorry. I'm going to do a lark's head knot on this side. Okay, so you have your wax linen folded in half. And again, this is the two ply wax linen. And you're going to stick it through the loop on your branch toggle, open it up, and then pull the other, the two ends through your loop. And this will make a lark's head knot. Lark's knot. Lark's head or lark's? My brain is on vacation today. Okay, I'm going to do, so you can see I have the one knot there, and I'm going to do one more just to get this started. And you want to make sure your knots are nice and tight. Okay, and now I'm going to take these two ends and twist them together. And you know what I didn't do that will help? Just grab a paper bag. And I'm going to polish this. So I'm just pinching and pulling it through. And I'm going to do that two times. And that will help polish the wax linen and help your beads slide on a little bit easier. I'm going to slide this all the way down, wrap it around my finger, and pull the two strands through to tie just a simple knot, and pull it down. And I'm going to repeat this really quickly, seven times. I know, not the most fun thing to watch, but uh, if you're here, say hello. I'd love to see hear from you guys. If you have a question, now's a good time to ask a question while I'm just getting these on here. And again, this is the two-ply wax linen, and this is in walnut, and all the kits have the same color for the wax linen. I thought it was just a good, um, this one that's just a good neutral for knotting. Adds a nice earthy feel to your piece. So I like it a lot. Oh, Denise, you love the bracelet. Thank you. And this bracelet, you actually wear it with um, the clasp in the front. Usually we wear bracelets with clasps in the back, but this one I designed so that you will wear the clasp on the top of your wrist. So you don't want it to be too loose. It can be a little loose. It's not going to swing around too much while you're wearing it. Um, but you don't want it to be too big. So depending on your size of your wrist, you may want to use less spindles. The bracelet that I'm designing is eight and a half inches because it's to fit my um, wrist. And so most people are in between seven. Well, not most people because I'm in the category of most people, but <laughs> a common size is seven to seven and a half inches. And so you might have to leave out one or two of the beads. I think each bead is about an inch. So probably one bead is all you would need to remove to make it an inch smaller. <laughs> How do you find my blog? Great question, Denise. It's on my website, humblebeads.com. And you just click on the tab that says blog and it will be on there. Yes, Cynthia, you can use any um, any type of uh, cord as long as it's thin enough to go through. I really like wax linen because um, I feel like you don't have to glue the knots at the end. 
I kind of trust it a little bit more, mainly because I don't have a lot of macrame type skills, so I just use simple knots, and um, I really like the wax linen for that reason. But yeah, if you guys have some other cord you want to try at home, feel free to. Alright, last one guys. Okay, and I'm going to tie a knot here at the bottom. And then I'm going to look at my bracelet to see exactly what I did. <laughs> okay, so I'm going to attach to make sure my I have a closed jump ring here and I'm going to add a jump ring on the bottom here the wax linen is really strong Amanda and so um yeah I definitely love using wax linen okay now I'm going to take this little jump ring oh, did it wrong again I'm going to separate these two cords and I'm going to have one go through each side of the jump ring. So one through the left side, one through the right side, and then pull it down all the way so it's nice and tight. And on the bottom here, okay. Now I'm going to take these two strands and I'm going to tie them underneath the jump ring, making sure I keep that nice and tight. And now I'm going to just put this down. I'm going to tie a knot in the front underneath the jump ring. And I'm going to turn it over and repeat that and tie another knot. Make sure your knot's nice and tight. And I'm going to do one more. So I'm tying three knots underneath. Just to really keep that guy in there nice and tight. Okay, now I'm going to grab my scissors. And trim off a little bit. I like to leave a little tail and unfringe it a little. So just twist it the opposite way that they are twisted together and they'll fringe like that just a little bit. And repeat on the other side. Okay, and now I'm going to attach my little bead link onto that jump ring. Okay. Before I do that, what I did to attach this little cluster of flowers, I'm going to take a jump ring, open it up, slip it on over my knot, I kind of want to hide that knot a little bit. <laughs> and so, we'll just distract people with flowers. How's that sound? Okay, now I'm going to slip on my three little flower links here. Sorry guys, using all my concentration for this. Yeah, Heather. Let's put the... <laughs> Hi, my name's Heather, and I like to make things extra complicated. <laughs> Let's put the flowers on before we try to put it on. 
the wax linen and now we'll just slide on here okay now guys I'm gonna close this up but I'm gonna take it off screen and stick it right up to my face so that I can uh, actually see this so excuse me for just one second I'm just closing this jump ring but um, I'm blind and I have to see it close to my face <laughs> So give me just a second. And it's a little fiddly to make sure that it is on the knot and not on the jump ring when you're closing it. Okay, so there we have it around the knot and the, um, the jump ring is going around the cord like that. All right, now we are ready to attach this guy. So I'm going to open him up, slip on, and close this up really tightly. And now I'm going to put another jump ring and that's where I'm going to attach the leather cord on here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do the leather cord. Okay, so we're going to take, this is a seven inch piece of leather cord. It's 1.5 millimeter leather cord and you're just going to tie two knots just like we've been tying the wax linen. And so I want this one to be on the rather small side but I still want a little bit of that loop just to be decorative. And now I'm going to tie another knot And I'm going to make this one just a little bit long, uh, you know, a little bit more room there so that I can stick my branch toggle through there. You want that nice and tight on both of them. And then you're just going to trim off the ends so they're even. Okay. And now I'm going to attach this with a jump ring onto my bead link here. We're almost done with this little guy. So I'm going to attach him on here. Close that up nice and tight. Oh, I've missed some of these comments. <laughs> okay. Oh, you know what I did on this one? It's like, why do I have so many extra jump rings? So I actually did it with two jump rings on here to give it a little bit more room. So I'm not going to redo it. I'm just going to add a note at the beginning of the video so that people can see that that's what you're going to start with is two jump rings and then you'll do the knot on here. Oh. Yep, wouldn't it be a video if there, uh, a Heather Powers video if there wasn't a mistake in it? Oh. <laughs> you know, I do that on purpose so that you guys uh, feel like you can make mistakes and make jewelry too. <laughs> I wish that was the case. I'm just an airhead sometimes. Okay, I have my jump ring, slipping this guy on here, and then closing them up. Okay, and 
pretty sure this will still work. It just laid a little bit better with the extra jump ring or two on there. So that still works, but I did like it better with the jump ring. So there's the finished bracelet. Dun, dun, dun. I am going to restring it for myself. Um, off camera though. <laughs> Since it really doesn't take more than a few minutes to do the stringing part of the bracelet. And so that's it guys. Just a really simple, fun, easy design. This is how it's going to look when you wear it in the front. I'm not even sure if it will fit me without those. Oh well, yeah, it will. Of course, trying to put it on one-handed. Oh yeah, it really would be better with those two extra jump rings. Maybe. Yeah, it it um it goes on a little easier if you have the extra jump rings. So I'll just put the other one on that I know is the right size. And boy, those two jump rings really made a difference. Okay, there we go. Oop, there it is on. And so you just kind of let that guy hang out over here. This is your focal. And you have all your beautiful little spindles and a cat hair in the back. <laughs> That's it, you guys. That's my design. Like I said, I have it in four different colorways. And they, um, they're on the website already. Oh, I'm reading your comment, Stephanie. So uh, I'm, I'm glad my colors are on trend with um, Christopher Banks. <laughs> <laughs> so if you guys want the kits, head on over to HumbleBeads.com. Um, there's a limited amount of each one, and I have four different kits. So once they're um, once they're all out, they're gone. Oh yes, Lynn, you'll have to show me how to make the wrist a sister so that I can put my things on correctly. Okay, now we have the Great Bead Extravaganza coming up November. 13th and 14th and this is the kit that I have that's the project I'm going to do for the great bead extravaganza and that will be my segment is Sunday at 12 45 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and then um, sorry I was reading your comments and I have this in five different colors with all different little houses. And it's a really fun knotting project again, cause I'm all about the knotting. <laughs> and again, um, who was it? Denise, you asked, the kit is at humblebeads.com. So hopefully that'll help. It should be right in the front. If they've all sold out, you won't see them. They may have all sold out. I don't know, I haven't been to the website since I put them up. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed this project. Again, just this fun, simple one. And um, this would look great with maybe two of them, two different colors, <laughs> or another Humble Beads bracelet that you could pair it with. I really like that. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining me. Again, the kits are at humblebeads.com on Friday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. We will do our coffee break and I have some new check glass and disc beads for you guys that I'll be sharing with you. So that's it for today. I will hopefully see you guys on Friday at 3 p.m. Until then, don't forget to join me in the Humble Beads VIP party group. I love seeing your creations in there and you guys can always ask questions or share tips and tricks in there with each other too. All right, guys, have a great week. Take care, and I'll see you on Friday. Bye.